everyone and welcome back to another installment of the viral podcast i'm your host Paige jen and i'm your host chelsea lynn and before we get started just let me go ahead and pop my top i got a cold one here ready oh, ice cold dr pepper dp i love that noise mm, what's a better noise popping a popping a cold one or popping this pussy or popping a wet pussy you know how just just oh those are some good sounds. Yeah. Um, popping a tennis can, though. I wouldn't know nothing about that. And it smells so good. What? It makes a pop. It makes a... Yeah. Makes a... Really? It's a good one. I'd like to play more tennis with you guys. I'm just never here. Dude, you need to get off tour. <laughs> I will. And as soon as we're off tour and in, in Nashville, I'm playing tennis on a regular basis with you guys. Every day. Well, maybe not every day. I'm fat. I need to pace myself. Okay, we'll do every other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, my dad and Ross and Jerry and Brett have all been at my house. Well, not my house, but our house for the past. Mm, it was a couple strong days. And I'm gonna we got so high, dude. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm sure that was a lot for you. Oh. But that sounds like a good time. I felt like I was in a college dorm. <laughs> With old dudes. Everyone had to piss, and, like, my dad was pissing in a bottle because I only have one bathroom. Yeah. Jerry takes long shits. My dad's out there pissing in bottles. Chick-fil-A cups. I was in pissing in bottles. Big ones. All of us were pissing <laughs> in bottles. <laughs> huh? Because somebody was always in the bathroom. Jerry just, takes so long. So y'all were just releasing left and right. Just everybody was releasing something. And their prostates are bad. They cannot oh wait. God, their, pro- their prostates are bad. They're enlarged. Where did everybody sleep? Um, my dad slept with Jerry. In and, Jerry's bed. Yeah, and they were. My dad was snoring all night, and then Russ slept out in the living room. And I guess he like fell over the ottoman in the middle of the night on the way to the bathroom. And he was like, ah! he needs a nightlight. You guys should have left a little nightlight on for him. There yeah. was some on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then he said he stayed perched up on the ottoman for two minutes to see if we would come down the stairs and check on him. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Huh? Dude, what a cool dude, though. God. Yeah, we went to the Padres game. Oh, yeah. We went to the Padres game, celebrated Dawn's birthday. I saw on your Instagram story that looked like a good time. Great time. Wow. Good. Uh-huh. Russ caught a foul ball. <sighs> what the fuck is this? What is that? <laughs> That's not me. Oh. What is that? What is going on? No idea. don't jiggle Hold jiggle. On. It folds <laughs> up to be <laughs> wiggle wiggle. That's your alarm to that's not. So who's? Hold, hold on. <laughs> what do we do? What? Who was that? It was Ma- a phone. Whose phone? Check your phone. It's no. The, oh, it's, it's your, your laptop. Bluetooth? What? How? I just turned What's down your laptop, laptop and it went down. What it the was hell your was laptop. that? <sighs> why that be- was weird. <laughs> why before every Whoa. podcast, like at Turn the start of every off. podcast, Dude, there's no noise. If this does not show you. That we are not professional podcasters, and we don't know what we're doing, and and Brett needs to do better. Sorry. I don't know of a better example than that. He tried putting it off I on did. me. I did. Th- I know for sure it's not me. I have no idea what that sound is. Huh. It laptop. was coming from your laptop. I know. Okay. It was. Well, yeah. let's move on. Yeah. And it let's forget soothing. that happened. Mystery noise. It was soothing. That was a good one. Dude, we were all like... You were just chilling, singing, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? I thought there was a new segment y'all didn't tell me about. (laughs) No, we would not spring a new segment on you. Wow. Wow. We would not spring a new. Yeah, we would. would Yeah, you would. We'd have a team meeting first. Right before. Yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway. I don't think anybody's prepared to podcast. That's true. Well, I don't know. 
I just, you just got to come up and get here and talk in microphones and hope it just goes well and hope that something like that doesn't happen every time. You kind of just record and, what you say. I mean, here, you know, yeah. Or whatever happens. You just record what you say. And sometimes there's um, <laughs> spots where you're like, fuck, I should have said that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What you laughing at? Brett's laughing and it's making me laugh. Because he's... He said you just got to record what you say. That's all we do. That's, that's what we do. I do need to start wearing a GoPro on my head. To get footage of, of Brett? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. Well, you need to wear a GoPro so when he says something that you say you said, he goes, oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, I need to see you it. Can, I need proof. Brett? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You can, uh, <laughs> you can play it back. I never said that. Yeah, I know. Even, <laughs> you can play it back. I know. It's you need a struggle. Permanent GoPro. And I read that if you ever feel the need that you have to film your significant other to sh- prove to them, then that's bad. Them what they do, then it's a little too late. Uh, hmm. You can. You can what also. What if we're influencers uh, uh, though? You, what if we're influencers though? <laughs> you can also have the GoPro whenever he's. Remember last episode, you said that he was rubbing your clit and the way he looked at you, so we could see what that's like. <laughs> but yeah. then I'd have to be looking at him. Well, I'll just mount it up on the ceiling. L- mount, it, mount it on the side to where you just can, ear. to where you can just look up at the ceiling and it's looking over at him. Holy <laughs> shit. That would be so fucking weird. <laughs> you could post it on your OnlyFans. The way the way uh, Brett, Brett looks, looks at me, at me while, while rubbing my clit. And I'm being, being dead serious. You could do that. Just staring. And just have a compilation of him, just the way he's looking at you. That's fucking uh I don't know if that's the content I'm going for. I mean. But I'll let you know. You do it with Greg and then. uh, Oh, God. (laughs) That'll be my OnlyFans. Just what I look like. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Interesting. What a great way to start the pod. I'm having a great time. Are y'all having a great time? Having a beautiful time. Beautiful day. Yeah. It is. It's June 14th. Life's good. You know, even when it's not, it is. Even oh, when it's, yes. you know, you got to look at the glass half full. <clears throat> We're you here. You have to seriously wake up and just be thankful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Changes your whole day. Yep. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? No, it's true. Yeah. You guys are right. Dude, sometimes I just wake up and want to be a bitch almost. Because <laughs> you wake up to that. Yeah. I'd be mad too. <laughs> Brett, lean back and touch oh. the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pee. Don't ever say lean back and touch the wall again. Already again? Don't ever say lean back and touch the wall. <laughs> Brett, put your back to the wall. <laughs> Brett, bend over and spell run. Huh? Oh, R-U-N. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Okay, so what are we doing? Trivial or no? Or Oh, you, yeah, you we're, had to do something. Oh, oh, um, you guys, I'm going to be in Lexington, Kentucky next week doing shows. And then after that, Chattanooga, Memphis, and New Orleans. So please come and see me out on the road. I only have a few shows left. I'm going to be in Lexington, Kentucky, and then Chattanooga. I'm really excited about um, Memphis and New Orleans. I'm excited about all of them, but I love Memphis and I love New Orleans, so I'm excited about those shows. I'm and I love Chattanooga. Dude, I love every. Well, there hasn't been anywhere we've gone that I've been like, oh, this place sucks. I love everywhere. It's it's nice to see all these places. Yeah. Even though you're only there for a night. Right. Still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. But yeah, I am ready for trivial. Let's get it rolling. <gasps> get trivy. Get trivial. Ah, uh, get uh, trivy. Get trivial. Ah, uh, fuck me. Uh, get trivy. Get trivial. Oh. Uh. That sounded like Beavis. That sounded <laughs> just like Beavis. <laughs> All right, you sluts ready? Yes. I'm going to I'm going to do great today. Really? We'll see. All right. My turn. Here we go. <laughs> the 2000s yellow. The 2000s. Here we go. Wow, the 2000s. In the film The Hangover, what name is the baby given? Carlos. Correct. She does know The Hangover. And you don't watch movies. 
Yeah, because when he's, like, jacking off at the table. Like, not at the table, Carlos. Oh, wow. Wow, you you got me on that one. Oh, I did watch Napoleon Dynamite. You did. From start to finish, and yep. I didn't look at my phone. Well, that, to take the pic, but. Was that your first time? I've watched it probably 20 times, but never finished. Oh, such a good movie. Fucking funny. It's fucking funny whatever i feel like i want to do gosh dude the grandma (laughs) uncle rico tina dude that whole movie is so fucking good yeah all right your turn honeys tina come eat some ham here we go (laughs) that lard serial killers orange serial killers you'll get this one and here we go which serial killer murdered 36 women between 1974 and 79? Um, what's his fucking name? God, hold on. <laughs> Ted Bundy. Oh, I, I guess I could have known that one. Ready? True or false? Purple. Purple. True. Or false. Purple. Here we go. Here we go. The largest sandcastle in the world measured 45 feet high. Is that true or false? False. That's correct. It stood uh, 54 feet high. Okay, I was about to say. It seems like it'd be more than 45 feet. Yeah. Okay. Yay. 54. Okay. I thought they could do better than that. That's what I'm thinking. All right, here we go. Sports, yellow. Sprouts. Sprouts, yellow. Here we go. Here we go. In his NBA career, Michael Jordan wore only three numbers. What are they? 20. 23. He he wore three numbers? I only knew about 23. Mm. Yeah, when he he retired, came back. Gosh, I freaking know, but I fucking. It's 45. Oh, that's why Donovan Mitchell, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 45, 23, and. And then he had why to wear do I like a replacement say six? jersey. That's LeBron. Okay, what is it? 12. <gasps> Dude, I fucking thought 12 in my head and said there's no way. I wouldn't have known that. That was a tough one. I think I heard Brett talking about it the mm. other day. I wouldn't have known that. <coughs> hey, um. <gasps> Tio Tio. I'm in the mood for another segment. Why don't you go ahead and hand me that Letters to Penthouse book behind you? Go ahead. Letters to Penthouse by Chelsea. I love that sound clip. I all felt right. like trivia was was done and gone within seconds. Why? It's fast. Hit it and quit it, baby. That's what I'm here for, to hit it and then to quit it. All right. All right. Everybody ready? This one's called, here we go. This one's called, with her husband unable to get it done, she found young talent to fill the gap. My husband is a long haul trucker. My problem isn't the semi Merle drives all over the country. Name's fucking Merle. But the semi he brings to bed. I don't know if it's a health problem. He won't see a doctor. Or if he's just getting too much road pussy. (laughs) But I know. Road pussy. I'm going to start saying road pussy. (laughs) Got rock bottom road pussy. But I know. That for quite a while, he hasn't been able to get it up good and hard for me. Oh, Merle tries to stuff his half hard on into my pussy. But no matter how juicy he gets me, the thing is just a big, limp noodle. Which doesn't mean he's a total loss in bed. When he gets his tongue going, it's busier than a cow on a salt lick. And the orgasm this brings takes the edge off for a while. But I still needed to have a stiff cock shoved in me every now and then. 
I exercise daily to feel healthy. And I'm revived to report that I get my share of honks when I walk down the street. And if you think it's easy keeping a waist small and an ass round and firm, I'd like to see you try. I don't think my boobs are a problem either. They're fair-sized, firm, and pointy. Do you guys think we don't notice when their eyes always land? None of this seems to help with Merle. So I found myself paying increased attention to the young guy who does our lawn every week. A quiet fellow who worked hard and didn't talk much. Teddy would just look at me with his soulful eyes and gave me a pretty good idea of what's on his mind. I couldn't help but notice his body either. It showed abundant evidence of a rigorous training program. Broad shoulders, big pecs, arms, trim waist, washboard abs. All of that plus a golden tan. I work out every day in our family room, which has a big picture window that almost gives me a sensation of being outdoors. It also does kind of put me on display to anyone watching from outside. And Teddy didn't seem to look to look my way more and more while he mowed. My workouts involved a lot of bending down. I took to make sure my ass was facing out. To give Teddy a better view. I don't wear a bra while exercising. It makes me sweat too much. So my boobs bounce around a lot. And over time, my leotard tends to pull into my crack, highlighting my pussy lips. Sometimes I nearly got off thinking how it'd feel to have Teddy's beautiful body pressed hard against me, the way he watched me when I worked out, with his pants bulging out almost all the time. There didn't seem to be much danger of any lack of interest on his part. One day after Teddy had been watching me a while, he walked up to the house and just stood there staring at me through the window. I couldn't resist those big, soulful eyes or the bulge in his pants. I opened the door. He walked in and, without a word, sank to his knees, his face inches from my crotch. I put my hands on his head and drew his face into my pussy. After a moment, he began to gently lick the crotch of my leotard. Then he gripped my ass cheeks and pulled me closer. The feel of his tongue through the leotard sent a rush up my spine. The crotch of the leotard was soaked. I almost lost it when I felt those hot lips on my crotch. My knees felt weak. I had to see what was bulging in Teddy's pants. I led him to the big leather couch and lowered myself onto onto the deep cushions. I spread my legs and eased him down on his knees. My eyes seemed fixed on a few unruly pussy hairs curling out of my leotard. His eyes seemed fixed. After a moment, he moved back and kissed my inner thigh just above the knee and I inhaled sharply. He moved higher, planting kisses that felt hot enough to melt metal, and he kissed his way toward my pussy. I rocked my hips into him. With one smooth hand movement, he slipped off my leotard. My breast sprang free, nipples erect. Cupping them tenderly, he kissed them all over and sucked the nipples. He was now facing my juicy pussy lips. He thrust his tongue deep and, gripping my ass cheeks, pulled me close. His thrusting tongue found my clit, and he licked it forever. I rocked my pelvis onto him, meeting every, th- meeting every thrust. Suddenly, I 
felt the knob of his cock at my pussy. With a few determined thrusts, he was buried in me. He began stroking in and out, rubbing my clit with each thrust. He groaned as he pumped harder until we both came. Spent, he rolled off the couch and laid on the carpet, his cock lying limp on his belly. He was too tempting. I knelt over and lifted his dick. I licked the head and soon felt it stirring. His shaft grew and stiffened in my hand. Once it was standing tall again, I knelt over and guided it in my slit. <laughs> slit? Then he lowered him then he lowered then lowered myself on it. He groaned. I bobbed up and down on him, and our excitement built. He exploded. Then, with his cock still in me, I had a violent orgasm that made me forget the frustrating nights with Merle and his limp noodle. Merle still has his case of limber dick, but his tongue tides me over between sessions with my young cocksmith. <laughs> now, in addition to mowing the lawn, Teddy comes by many nights when my husband's truck is gone. He seems to enjoy burying his tongue in my pussy as much as I enjoy having him do it. The end. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, glad she got that. Well, got to get a gardener. The limp noodle. Everyone needs a gardener. With a hard cock. <coughs> I mean, you know. A limp noodle's not going to do it. Bless Merle's heart. He's just out there working and providing for her. Ha- has a lawn <laughs> she's a a gardener. Home, she's at home getting her slit licked. <laughs> <laughs> her fucking slit. <laughs> That's so gross. Dude, who Getting says her slit? Slit? <laughs> who says slit? Dude, I don't know. I'm fucking mad. Me too, slit. Holy fuck. What if you meet somebody and you're like, lick my slit? Oh, I'd be, oh God. Put your cock in my slit. <laughs> I'd be mad. Ooh. I wonder if anybody really says that. I bet. This bitch does. Yeah, she just did. All right. What a wonderful couple of segments we had. We are ready to get this pod rolling. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Hey, honeys. True crime junkie here. So my name is Shelby, and I grew up in a town in New Jersey um, called Egg Harbor Township, or EHP for short. And it's about 15 minutes outside of Atlantic City, New Jersey, which everybody is familiar with. Um, but in between EHT and Atlantic City is another, I guess you could call it another little town called West Atlantic City. And in this area, there is a strip of dilapidated motels. And these motels are really eerie looking, really spooky, really run down. I mean, you couldn't pay me to stay in one of them. So back in 2006, the bodies of four female prostitutes were found behind one of these motels in a drainage ditch. Mm. And they were all murdered in the same way and facing the same direction. So right away, that looks like a serial killer because they leave, like, a signature with their bodies, I guess, and they leave them all laying the same way. Um, Unfortunately, the case was never solved. The murderer was never found. Um, So I was just curious. If anything like this has happened in your guys' hometowns, and I would love to hear your stories. Um, so, yeah, RIP to the slain prostitutes. Love you, honeys. Bye. Love you, honeys. Love you. Whoa. You got any uh, murder stories in your hometown? We had this guy. Uh, his name was John Pender, mm-hmm. and he had lions. I don't know how many lines he had, one or two, I don't know. But he would, like, drive with them in the back of his truck, and he ended up killing two people that, like, worked for him, and then I think he, like, blew them up. When was this? I think 98. Whoa. And he's still alive, and I think they are finding, like, that he's killed more people, so... 
They're still investigating. Oh Last I heard. I never heard of that. I need to dig in more. It happened in Duchesne, the tiny oh, town I grew up in. The littlest town. The tiniest town. <sighs> um, <coughs> We do have a, we've had a couple things. We've had a couple date lines around our, our area. There's this, so I live, I, I'm, I'm from right on the Oklahoma-Texas border, like, right on the Red River, and, like, right across the river is Gainesville, Texas, Gainesville, Denton, all that area, and people, like, especially, like, the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, I really haven't heard anything lately, but I also haven't lived there in 15 years, um, people would, like, kill, like, dump bodies, right on the, right on the other side of the, the border, in Oklahoma, in this one little area, what was that area called? Brown Springs. Brown Springs. Brown Springs. And people would like, I mean, they would find dead bodies there constantly from murdered people. Like, they did a dateline about it. Fuck, they did a dateline dude. about it. Um, Brown so, Springs. And people would, like, bring in, like, and nobody could, nobody know who these people were. Like, people bring in dead bodies. Somebody, Sounds like a good spot. Brown Springs. And people, there was a murder in Gainesville, and the, and the guy drove over and dumped the body in Brown Springs. Yep. Was it just, like, brown, like, you couldn't see no, the it was bottom? Just, no. It wasn't clear water, or what's Brown they Springs? Just, that's just what it's called. They wouldn't even put it in, put the bodies in the, in the water. water. It'd be, like, just on the land, just dump the bodies. Because the it fuck? was before the casino was there, yeah. and there was, like, no cops. Yeah. That, you, like, you could actually... Dump a body there and probably get just away like with a it. super rural. Yeah, area. now the yeah now the casino's there, yeah. the world's largest casino. Then that's probably why there hasn't been. Um, there was that's a huge that was known for being like a huge like in the country. I think one of the, like the top spots that like dead bodies were found. Fuck, odd. That's really weird. Yeah, there's still an un unsolved murder that I think they did a maybe it wasn't Dateline. It was a 2020 or something. Yeah, it was one of those. Uh, there's an unsolved murder in my hometown involving the ex sheriff and his son. That's a whole then that's a whole thing. The sketchiest shit goes on all around us and it's just like you could be talking to the guy at the grocery store who's just a fucking I think killer. about that all the time. Yeah. Like they could be living a double life. You never know if somebody's giving you their real name. I know we were watching a um me and Greg were watching a dateline a while back and this guy in Texas they finally found out that there was a rape and a murder in like nineteen seventy five and finally they caught this motherfucker. They went to arrest him and he's like a grandpa. Just a normal life with a normal mm-hmm. wife and kids and grandkids and he's like a grandpa. And I was like, Greg, can you imagine your dad getting arrested for a rape and murder forty years ago? Just compl- how do people live a double life? I can barely live my own. Yeah, huh, you know, wild. If I was out there fucking killing people on the side. Wild. You'd be a psychopath. Yeah. But yeah. Damn, they can dude. handle it. They can handle it. You know, a normal person could not. Just I yeah. don't get it though. Yeah. Like, I guess nobody who's not a murderer doesn't fucking get it. And I think that's but. why it's so interesting to a lot of people true crime because. We can't wrap our heads around it. We're Whoa, like, what, what in the, the... Yeah. It's interesting to hear about and to watch. That's why all these TV shows and documentaries exist. Because we... It's so fascinating to us because we can't comprehend it. So... You said it was, like, more men than women? In terms of like, that murder? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, ser- like serial killers, there's, like... It's, like, 99.9% men. Maybe it's, like, sexual frustration... I don't know. People just need to start busting nuts. You know? Yeah. I I do know. I've always said that. Hey, don't kill people. Don't kill people. Do you can better. tell you can tell them all you want. They're still going to kill people cuz they're crazy. But don't kill people. You know? Yeah. For real. Holy shit. <laughs> like, I'm not even trying to be funny being like I don't know. kill. That's wild. I think it's just a chemical imbalance that just I think it's a lot of shit a lot of shit I I think it's a lot of you have to have like a lot of alone time maybe like to yourself to kill seems like you know it could be anybody I mean fuck dude that's a grandpa living a life imagine I know 
I know. Imagine being his wife. Yeah. Yeah. So. My sister, did I say the story on here? She worked at um, Infinity in Escondido. And every night this guy would walk her to her car. And then he started not showing up to work. And she's like, what the fuck? And she found, well, they all found out that he, like, had been sneaking in to kids' rooms and, like, getting through their windows and, yeah. Holy yeah. fuck. And he was walking, my like, my sister trusted him enough to walk her to her car every fucking night, at, late at night. And then he was, and he had kids of his own, married. Oh and seemed like the super normal fucking guy. And then he's doing that shit. You like, don't truly know someone. So sad. And yeah, I, will, I, I will even tell Greg. I've been with Greg for 16 years. I think I know that man, but I know every little detail about his personality, his everything. And I've told him this before. I'm like, dude, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> you you could like, what you, you, you could be killing people and I don't know it. And he's like, I'm not killing nobody. <laughs> I'm like, you could be. You could be. Yeah, you could be. You could be. I mean, you don't know somebody, you know? That's scary to think about. Oh, like yeah. It's head. fucking scary. We're getting deep here, but it's true. You don't, you know? It's always the people they are like, yeah, I never expected my neighbor, Tim. Mm-hmm. I see him every day grabbing his mail. and mm-hmm. He was a nice guy. He was, he was such, yeah. He was a, yeah. Oh. <sighs> dead uh-huh and it's the weirdos killing people too oh yeah we saw it coming a mile away he was so <laughs> he was so weird we were so scared of him so everybody's fuck everybody's just fucking you don't know anybody i will say the law needs to fucking change on like if nothing has happened then you can't like file a police report like even if you feel threatened what do you mean well, there's this guy, Sloan, I watch on YouTube, and he uh-huh. just moved to L.A. He said he was walking home from the bar at 3 a.m., and a guy in a all-black, like, Spider-Man suit, like, but just all black, yeah. he had clothes over it. You couldn't see his face. He was just standing in front of his door, and, like, or, like, in his neighbor, like, in yeah. a gated community. And Sloan was like, hey, dude, you got to leave. And the guy wouldn't leave, and he stood there for, like, four minutes not saying anything. And so the guy Sloan called the cops and they're like, well, we can't do anything about it because he hasn't done anything. Like he hasn't hurt, tried to hurt you, but it's like this guy's on your property. Right. Standing in a fucking right. full masked. <laughs> Even though they can't do anything, it's still good to call because what if something was done later on that night or whatever and they had a call log of what time he was where and what all that shit when like a murder happens, all that shit makes it all connects if i hear a gunshot me and maggie have talked about this if i hear a gunshot anywhere i'll note the time i'm like okay mm-hmm. it's it's one fifty nine p.m yeah always just I like from to do that too. just from watching date lines just in case if i hear a knock a week from now whatever did you hear i'm like yep i heard it at one <laughs> f- you know yep. 152 23 those little details make 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 it so, but yeah. But the guy Sloan, he walked out of his house the next day. Like he couldn't sleep till seven in the morning. They wouldn't do shit. The cops wouldn't come. Nothing. And the guy, I guess, just ran off and got in a car. And but Sloan makes videos about people, and like he's always getting cease and dis- what is it called? Yeah, yeah. He's getting letters like about being sued all the time. Yeah. So he's thinking people are trying to come after him. What the hell? Yeah, scary. And then he found a fucking knife out on the road from where the guy was running. Holy. I haven't heard of this. I looked this guy up. He just does, like, oh. small talk on on YouTubers and shit. Oh, damn, <laughs> He's dude. a YouTuber. Damn, those YouTubers. But it's like people don't realize, though, like, public figures and stuff, they do have a lot of, you can say anything, and yeah. people could fucking... You don't know. Mm-hmm. Wild. <laughs> All right. So, hot kids. <laughs> hot your wife. wife. Yep. <laughs> Hello. We want to tell you about HelloFresh, America's 
number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh ingredients delivered straight to your doorstep. And you know, we love keeping it fresh around us. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, fit and wholesome, family friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. Do better. And you can save, on average, about $65 a month when you use HelloFresh. And hey, who doesn't like to save money? We both use HelloFresh. We wouldn't sponsor them if we didn't love them, okay? And I think why I love them so much is when you don't want to spend just hours in the kitchen cooking a big meal, which sometimes I love to do, sometimes it's nice just to get a quick 20 or 30 minute meal in. Go to HelloFresh.com slash viral16 and use code viral 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's right. Go to HelloFresh.com slash viral16 and use code viral16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Wow. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hey, honey, it's Bart Putty here. I had something to get off my chest. My fiance of seven years and me were having sex on the couch. And from listening to your podcast, I had the courage to tell him that I wanted to try to do butt stuff. So he was pretty excited, and he wanted to try and do anal. Well, I have diarrhea most of the time, so my butthole is pretty tight, and he couldn't fit it in. So instead of putting his dick in my ass, when he was sucking me, he was putting his thumb in my ass. And I don't know what happened if that unlocked, like, a queef button in my pussy, but I was queefing uncontrollably. So I need advice on how to get my butthole ready for a dick. Thanks. Love ya. Love oh, you, yeah. Love you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, first off, I love that the pod opened that up for you guys. Yes. Love it. Um, advice on how to get your butthole ready. Here's what I do. Okay. Number one, and I don't have anal all the time. All right. But if... On the rare occasion that, that I do, if I know I'm going to do it or something, I like won't. Here's what I do. I will purposely like not eat dinner. <laughs> I will, I'll eat breakfast and stuff, but I'll like, I'll like save dinner because like I shit a lot. So I want to, you know, I make sure and I shit all day. I'll just get that, get all that shit out, get all that shit out. Um, I'll take an emodium. That's going to keep me from shitting. Okay. Take an emodium. And then. Lots of lube, honeys. It's going to take some time to get it up in there. I mean, I'm talking like I'll stick lube up my ass and squirt it, put it all over the dick, everything. And it's not supposed to just slip in quickly like a pussy. That just slips in no problem. You got to, I mean, quarter inch your way in at a time. Very little. And breathe. Very little. Take a breath. Very little. It'll, it'll take 10 minutes to get it in. But once it's in and you're kind of, loosened up feels 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 all right just lay there and hold your breath and yeah hope for the best just take it slow it's not gonna fit in quickly i don't do any preparation really no nah, i'm not because i'm never planning on doing anal yeah well that's why i never do it and you know if i'm gonna do anal i'm just gonna kind of risk it for the biscuit i mm. don't feel like Doing all the enema and all that. No, I've never done that. I will like make sure I take a couple shits before, and I'll take and then I'll take my emodium so I won't be shitting anymore. Oh yeah, the daily shits definitely have to yeah. be out. Yeah, and then, yeah, then from there I'm pretty much just going for lube, it. Lube, 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 lube. Try it again, honeys. Lube yourself up. Take some lube and put it inside of your butthole. That's what I do. And then put more lube. On the dick, around the butthole, everything. And then I'm talking like little at a time. You know, pinky nail size at a time. Little, little, little. Inch your way in. And then, oh, oh, anal. I'm having Amy. I'm having Amy. And then just take that sucker out. And then you're going to feel like you have diarrhea again. Yep. And you'll have to go sit on the pot for a while. And then you put it in your mouth. No, we're not doing ass to mouth, Brett. Okay. 
I've done that. God. Okay. With bread? Of course. Maybe. That was at the beginning. Yeah. I don't think I would do it now. When you're trying to impress. Yeah. Well, not only that, just when... You're still horny for him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do every... We, we go wild at beginning of relationships. At the, oh, well, yeah, you have to put out your best, yeah. your best self. Yeah. A few years in. And then they're like, oh, <laughs> fuck, they're psycho just like everybody else. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone's probably psycho. No doubt. <laughs> Duh. Next call. Yep. Hey, honeys. Super shy one here. Aww. Feeling sick to my stomach making this call, but that's Aww. how much I love you guys. I just wanted to call in to let you guys know that Paige, you weren't the only one who was uh, mispronouncing the word the word squirrel. I have a boyfriend who was imported from Italy at the age of 18, so he has a pretty heavy Italian accent. Um, he can't pronounce the word now, but uh, uh, about 10 years ago when we were first hanging out, he was definitely butchering the word. So, babes, tell everyone how you used to pronounce the word squirrel real quick. Squirrel. <laughs> pretty bad, right? But uh, give us another sentence with the word squirrel. Uh, I like the sentence you created. I watched the squirrel run across the street to buttfuck the neighbor's hamsters. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> so anyway, um, so there's that. And um, I also want, I've been, we've been really loving the Demon and the Mona Lisa segment, so I was wondering if you can try that, except the demon uh, is being fucked by the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. And uh, and the de- and uh, it's the demon that's asking all the <coughs> questions. I wonder if that's a, maybe a challenge for you guys, but okay. wanted to see if you can do pull it off. All right, love you guys. Bye. Oh, <laughs> love that you. That was probably the best call we've ever gotten. Brett, can you make squirrel? Squirrel. <laughs> a sound bite. Noted. <laughs> yes. What? That was hilarious. That was awesome. Did she mean? I, she meant Todd and Damien. She said Mona Lisa. Mona, we, am I missing something? She said Mona Lisa. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe just the moaning. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I think. Hmm. Oh yeah, I think we All had right, a you Mona try Lisa. It? So, you're the demon, but you're being fucked. Oh shit! By you? Yeah, and I'm just a slut. Strapping it on, or okay. <sighs> Yeah, you like that? It was in me. Yeah, I'm fucking you. Who? Me, Chelsea. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel that big strap on? Oh, what's your middle name? Lynn. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm fucking it. you. Oh, oh, do you like you it? Li- I love it. Do oh. you like it? You're the one getting fucked. Oh, fuck yeah. Who's fucking you? You. Say my name. Chelsea Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea Lynn's fucking me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Keep shoving that strap on. Oh, yeah. Me I'm going to go deep in your asshole. Thank you. Yeah, does that feel good? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Am I hitting that spot? Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, Chelsea. Oh, you're welcome. <sighs> I love how people give us. Um, people what, the fuck? What's the word? They give us, like, what's the word I'm looking for? They give us scenarios. Uh, scenarios and, like, try to, like, can you do this? Can you not? in terms of like the Damien and Todd stuff? And we nail it every time. Challenges. Every. Challenge. They challenge our like. Yeah, I love that one. Challenges. That was a good one. Oh, on the skill. Skill. Dude, I remember being <laughs> skill. Being in the fucking uh, drive through. I'd um, take orders. Back when I used to drive, I'd be taking people's orders at McDonald's, and somebody'd be like, "Can I get the chicken sandwich?" And in my brain, I'm like, please don't fucking say grilled. Because I knew I'd have to say that word because I would struggle with the word uh, grilled. How would you used to say it? Gosh, maybe I couldn't do the R. <coughs> it was just like grilled. I don't fucking, I don't know. Can I get a grilled chicken sandwich? Grilled? Maybe it wasn't even like. Yield. I don't even know. But uh, I would be being like, please say crispy. <laughs> so I can just say a crispy chicken sandwich. You could say, can I get a crispy chicken sandwich? But instead of crispy, could you cook it the opposite What's way? What's the opposite of crispy? And they go grilled. Yep, that's yep, what I want. that one. That's, that one. That's what I want. That's funny. That may be the best call, dude. Squee wheel. Squee. I liked his sentence, too. How he used it. Oh, his sentence was spot on. 
Oh, come here. Look at the skill. Skill yeah. was butt fucking the hamsters. We need that on a sound box. Squirrel. Well. That was great. All right, here we go. This is a compliment. I think Chelsea looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do. You know what's funny? I've always thought that. I never thought that. You've thought that on your yeah. own? Yeah. And it's never have said it? More so when I was younger. More so like high school days, call it. Dude, it's your eyes. Mm-hmm. We look like we could be brother and sister, me and Leo DiCaprio. Leonardo, dude. He's yeah. your brother. Yeah. I'd fuck him, even though we look alike. Did yeah. you know that Julianne Huff fucked him? Really? And said that it wasn't that good. Well, her niece. I've heard a her, lot of people. Her niece. Say. Did y'all hear about that? This was like a couple years ago. Her niece. You know who Julian Huff is? Yeah. yeah. Aren't they from Utah? Yes. Her niece put on her TikTok, my aunt had sex with uh, Leo DiCaprio and said it was boring. It was a huge big deal. I've heard they a may- lot of women say that. About him. Well, he don't have to. I just, feel, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He don't have to do nothing. He just gets his nut and bounce. Bounces. Yeah. He's gotta they be, said he hey, bugs his, like, Well, he's got to be on a movie set. He doesn't have time to get you off. Yeah. Leo, comment below. One more thing, too, about him. I guess, like, he, if you get above a certain age, he breaks up with you. Like, well, who knows if that's just a coincidence. Yeah. But every time, like, a girl gets over the age of, like, 28, bye-bye. That's weird. You're gone. That's got to be a coincidence. Because if you are vibing with someone and you love someone and you've been with someone for a while, why would that, why would you, that doesn't make any sense. Some people just like young women. (sighs) And if you're Leonardo DiCaprio, I mean, the young women be flocking. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Moving on. Who wants better sex? I know I do. That's for damn sure. And... I know just where to go to get that. AdamandEve.com. Okay? Guys, they've got it all. Butt plugs. Strap-ons, if you're into that. And if you're not into it, try it. You know, that's what we're here for. That's what you're here for. That's what he's there for. Trying. There's always room for trying something new. And trying out a new toy that could satisfy you. Who doesn't love busting a nut? Doesn't matter how much you spend or what you buy, all will be packaged and sent discreetly for free. Hey, bring more satisfaction to the bedroom. All you gotta do is enter code VIRAL at checkout for 50% off almost any one item. And when you do, you'll also get free shipping on your entire order. That's right, V-I-R-A-L. At adamandeve.com. Guys, this is an exclusive offer for this podcast. So, be sure to use code VIRAL at checkout at adamandeve.com. Oh, yeah! Hey, so, uh, let's call on Ash for some advice. Uh, I have a beautiful wife. She's insanely smart, beautiful, like I said. Um, an amazing mother. Probably one of the best mothers I've ever met in my entire life. And, you know, she's the love of my life. But I got a high sex drive, and she doesn't. She also tells me that sex isn't really important in her life. So I'm thinking her libido might be a little messed up. How do I convince her to go see a doctor to see if her hormones are messed up? Because I don't want to leave her. I don't want to cheat, but I have needs that need to be met. But to me, the sex life in your relationship is very important. You guys know that. I'm not expecting her to just give it up every single day whenever I want. But I'm not really a once-a-week once type of guy. I'm 35 years old. I like to, you know, have a healthy sex life while I still can. So uh, a little advice, you know, what I should do without uh, ruining my marriage. And so uh, any advice would be welcome. Thank you. Mm. 
thank you for calling in. Thank you. This is the number one subject that we get calls about. Yeah. This is the number one subject we get DMs about. We've talked about it before. People still keep calling in. It's pro- My guess is it's the number one problems that couples deal with. It is. And he's so sweet. Very sweet to call in. Um, you know, I know that's probably a vulnerable subject for you and and sounds like you really love your wife and you know, your head's on straight. You're not out there just sniffing around for pussy like you you really care about your wife. Here's here here's my thing. And this is not a blame thing. This is not like, well, blah blah blah. And this is not specific to you either. This could be a question for anyone listening that has this problem have you made it good for her are you making it good for her or are you climbing on top busting a nut and hopping off maybe she needs a little more you know she maybe a little bit of romance and I'm not talking you don't gotta wine and dine her every fucking time you want to have sex but maybe she needs a little more um, a Maybe. little more romance, a little more in the bedroom, you know, do you try to get her off or are you just hitting it and quitting it? I, I need a nut, so I'm going to nut and then bounce, you know, like that could play a big fucking role. And if your partner wants to fuck you. Cause you both need your needs met on that one. You know, um, I'm just thinking, man, if it's really good for her, she would want to do it more most of the time. Not every time. So you could be right. Her libido could be way off. Her, her hormones could be way off. She's also a mom. You guys are pretty young, 35. I'm assuming your kids aren't that old. She's probably tired as fuck. One of my sisters, does. she's like, I could go the rest of my life without having sex. Yeah. And she has five kids, but I'm... I know like, a lot of women that have said that. And, yeah, I me too, yeah. Just yeah. a lot of women. Yeah. I would... Um, I agree with you, dude, my man. I think sex is important. I, you know, no doubt. Um, <clears throat> I think, I, I think if you came to her with it and came to her with it from a good place, I don't feel like she, you know, hopefully she wouldn't be, oh, you think about it, oh, oh you care about it. But I think if you literally came to her and like, listen, I'm bringing this up to you because I love you and I want to stay with you and I want to be married to you. I have a, this is a problem for me. I want to have a good sex life with you. I don't want it, you to just have sex with me because, oh, it's, yeah. it's been a week. I got to give him my, you know. To like, fulfill his needs. Right. Like maybe, you know, your hormones could be off. Maybe you're, you know, and they, they could be. I think if you went to her and be like, this is important to me. I love you. I want to, there's a problem for me. I want to make this work. Can we do something about this? And she should respect how you feel yeah. because that's how you feel. Right. And talk right. to her. Right. Talk to her how you did to us. Just tell her what you need and how could it happen? How, what can you do even? Tell her how it makes you feel on, not even physically. Like, yeah, cause you need a bust a nut, but how it makes you feel like emotionally too. Cause that's a huge part. Not being wanted by your partner is fucking Huge and off. horrible and de- yeah, only yeah. And- it could be a mix of things. You could try to make it better for her. Give her a little bit more romance. Try that first. Try making sex better for her. Try making her days easier. Is there anything that you know you could take off of her plate that would make her not as tight? You know, like or even asking her what is it? Why? Mm-hmm. Well, what? he's yeah. he says that she just says it's, she doesn't think it's it's important. It is. That's important for every human being. Oh, Most yeah. people are, most people need to bust a nut. And a most. lot of people like affection. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how some women can just, because if I'm in a relationship, I like to. Yeah. Fuck. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I would, I would talk to her and try to get a little deeper than what she's giving you. I think she's just tired. She's just over it. And she's just telling you, like, oh, I don't think it's that important. I think it you should get deeper than just that. That conversation to me s- tells me that it stayed really surface level. That conversation stayed really surface level. I would get a little deeper on that. I'd be like, you know, I think you, everything you told us, I think you're a wonderful mother. I, I, I'm so happy to be with you. This is a problem for me. 
mm-hmm. want to feel wanted. I want to feel that connection with you. I want to feel that. I don't want to stray. I'm telling you now. I'm trying to prevent that. I don't want to stray. She should She should handle that. I'm, I'm thinking, because if I'm putting myself in her place, I'd be like, whoa. Just communicate. Don't get worked up and... It should oh go my, smoothly. Oh, my God. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Because if you bottle this up and don't say shit to her, it's not going to look good down the road. And you know that. That's why you said that. <sighs> what a this sweet is a, guy, though. I know. And this is a problem for a lot of people. So you're not alone. <laughs> everybody's fucking, everybody's just trying to get their nuts, man. When I'm stressed out, sometimes I don't feel like having sex. Really? If I'm crazy busy and yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. I don't feel like fucking all the time, but yeah, sometimes I just do yeah. so he can get his nut. <laughs> thanks, babe. <coughs> sometimes said, you have to babe. do shit you don't want to do to keep your relationship working, too. Yes, and that's true, but also, if he, he said he's not a once-a-weeker, okay, so let's say if he wants to have sex three or four times a week, which to me, that's that's a lot. I mean, that's pretty good, healthy sex life. I'm sure he doesn't want her to just lay there and just, okay, let's, you want it, so I'm going to give it to you, I'll just lay here. You know, he's wanting that partnership, that, Mm -hmm. you know, sexual connection. So, I think if you just straight up just tell her on a regular basis how you feel, get deeper with that conversation and see where it goes. Good luck, honey. Yes. We love you. We love you. Thank you for listening to the pod. Thank you for calling in. We love it when dudes call in with stuff like this. They say hair care is the new skin care, but there is one brand that has taken it to the next level. With a cult-like following, Kitsch has created game-changing essentials beauty enthusiasts swear by. From satin pillowcases to time-saving towels, Kitsch knows hair care doesn't stop in the shower. Want beautiful hair with minimal effort? Kitsch feels the same way. Kitsch offers game-changing, time-saving beauty essentials for hair, skin, and body. Whatever your budget, hair type, skin type, Kitsch believes you deserve little indulgences at affordable prices morning, noon, and night. Kitsch is self-funded, female-founded, and now carried in over 20,000 retail locations. Kitsch's best sellers include satin pillowcases, caps and eye masks, and the satin is vegan and cruelty-free. Not like silk, which is made from silkworms. These are so great for your hair, skin... And just, you'll have the best sleep of your life. I love the shampoo and conditioner bar. It makes my hair feel fluffy and soft for once. Brett even rubs the bar on his mullet and it makes that thing bounce. And the quick dry hair towels work wonders. You seriously have got to try it. And don't forget their classic hair ties and scrunchies. Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash viral. That's right, 30% off anything and every Everything at my kitsch. Spelled M Y K I T S C H dot com slash viral. One more time, my dot com slash viral for thirty percent off your order. Hi honeys. So quick question. How do you go about telling the guy that he gave you an S D D? Because I get tested regularly and in between partners I get tested. And I just got my test results, and I now have the clap. So how do you go around telling them that? Because I feel like it's a very awkward conversation because I don't want to be mad at them. But at the same time, like, because shit happens. I get it. But, like, yeah, how do you go around that? Thanks. Bye. I would just be like, (laughs) well, here's the thing. Sometimes I guess people don't know if they give you something because isn't it sometimes, like, the – it. Certain STDs don't show up and, like, they don't have symptoms of it, but then they'll have sex with a girl and give something to a girl. Is that the clap? I think it could be for both, like, yeah. men and women. Some You don't have symptoms, yeah. but you could have something. The clap's gonorrhea, I think. <coughs> oh. Yeah. No, the clap's chlamydia. No. Am I wrong? Can you do a yeah, fact check on uh, that one? Yeah, the clap's gonorrhea. Oh. <clears throat> chlamydia is just chlamydia, yeah. Well, I would just I text him and be like, hey, bro. Uh, don't know if you haven't had signs or whatever, but you gave me the clap, so you might want to get tested. And then send him that song, She Make It Clap, Clap, Clap. <laughs> no, don't yeah. do that. But That's uh, what I would do. 
Just send a text. Be like, bro, you gave me the clap. Just letting you know. I would say, hey, man, I get tested after every time I have sex. And I was clear until Mm -hmm. I disowned you. And so maybe say I'm not mad. It takes two to two to tango, but maybe you would want to go get checked out to, you know, maybe he needs to get on yeah. some medication so his dick doesn't, so he doesn't keep spreading it. And, and yeah, keep spreading it to other women. I'm sure some people are scared to tell the person who gave them STD because they're afraid of hearing, well, I don't have anything, so I didn't give it to you. So you're a whore. Oh, yeah. Whoa. You know, prepare, right? Prepare really? yourself for yeah. that. Too. Wasn't me. Oh, yeah. Got it from someone else uh-huh. probably. You yeah, know, that will be coming in maybe, <laughs> you know, you got a 50, 50 shot of, of someone being respectful and being like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm so I'll, sorry. I will go get tested. I haven't had any signs. I'm so sorry. Or wouldn't me got it from some other dick probably. And that's on them. Yeah. However they want to take yeah. it, but you're yeah. doing the right thing on mm-hmm. your end by telling them. Yeah. By telling them. Agree. Agree. And Hey, shit happens. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, you don't know. Half the time, the dick, if it's going to have something or not. Right. You don't know. It, it's you know, not talking to you. It's not telling you before it goes in. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. Whoa, whoa, Let me. A hand comes yeah, out to yeah, stop. Yeah. So, um, yeah, honeys. I think you should just text him. And what? Damn, dude. Gonorrhea. Is that, like, way worse than, like, symptom-wise? No, nah, it's just you just take a what's it called? The antibiotic a pill and it's gone. You know how you just grow up and you hear, Oh, all these things are so fucking bad and no, it's just That's what I'm saying, you just take a pill. <laughs> <laughs> just take a good. pill and be done with it. Send a pill. Take a take a pill, send a text, you're done. And don't wear a condom. Does so gonorrhea just, just go away though? Or think, does that so. live with you for the rest of your no, life? No, I think it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Gonorrhea. That's yeah, why I call it gonorrhea. <laughs> I'm going to fucking pee my head, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm crying. <laughs> Woo. All right. Holy shit. <clears throat> All right. Next call. Hey, honey. You have a funny story here. One day, me and my mother was out shopping, going to the Dollar Tree and the Goodwill and Walmart and all that stuff, and we went to get go get back in our car. And this guy had kind of blocked us in and was behind me pointing at us and just acting a fool. And we was like, motherfucker, get out of here, flipping him off. He wouldn't leave. He kept gesturing something, and we're like, go the fuck on. Well, he finally left. I mean, my mom got in the car, and we were like, what the hell? What a creep. Like, what the, What was he doing? Well, I get in. I put my car in reverse. I back out, put it in drive, start going forward, and my purse fell off onto my uh, windshield, and we were like, oh, he was just trying to help me out and tell me that my purse was on top of the car, and we proceeded to cuss him out and call him everything but a white boy. So, yeah, that's my story. Damn. You never know if people trying to be nice or yeah. whatever these days, but like an idiot. Yeah. That's so true. There are some nice people out there still. Yeah. Maybe you should have just... Listen to what he was saying. Could have been a kid back there. Yeah. He should have communicated better, I feel. He well, should have... Com- he- yeah, done better. Sometimes it's hard to chase people down, you know, if they have a drink on top of their car or something, you know. Brett is yeah, telling... Yeah, he could have ran and said, you know, excuse me, ladies, sorry to bother you, but your purse is, you know... Right. Right. Brett, are you telling other people to do better? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. That's great. He could have really helped them. Yeah, he could have helped them. He could have calmed down. They said he was going crazy and stuff. Yeah, why, yeah. why would you see a person just start freaking out and going crazy? You could have, you could be like, "Ma'am, your purse is on top of your car." Oh, okay, thanks, man. Right. He he needs to do better and communicate better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. We left our keys in our door one time, and people were knocking. We're like, "Who the fuck is that?" We're not answering. Next morning, oh, Brett, you left the fucking keys in the door all night. Perfect opportunity. They, they could have said, hey, you know, uh, we're your neighbor. 
I guess I don't know. Maybe they. We or you could have just you know answered, uh, answered the door. The yeah, door. that's true. That's true. Yeah. Y'all were probably so high and they're going, <laughs> yeah. who's, there? who's knocking? Who's like there? Police. Is that the cops? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were like trying to do a nice gesture. Right. Could, and y'all were like, we're not answering that. We're not answering. We could have been on damn Dateline. Yeah. Somebody could have just walked right in. Yeah. Keys yeah. were right there. Key was right there. Brett's done that like five times. Brett, why do you like do twice, that? Twice, I think. Why do you do that? I've done it twice. Do you guys ever do that? <laughs> I've never done that. I've like, never left my keys in the door. Really? Never. <clears throat> no. <laughs> so you just unlock it and then you just leave it there? And go in? Well, I usually have a lot of things in my hands I'm holding. Okay. You know, just, you know, Playing the blame game. Oh, no, I'm not blaming anybody. <laughs> just kidding. I'm blaming myself. I'm just know. kidding, Brett. <laughs> Gosh. Next call. Okay. Okay. Sure. Hey, honey, it's Blake here. Um, so, basically, I have a confession. I'm walking back right now from, from fucking my good friend's ex. And I don't know how I feel about it. But, uh, yeah, I just want to confess that, because I don't even know. How, should I feel bad about it, or should I say fuck it? Because cause he, I think he cheated on her or something. And it was one of the best sex I've had in a while. Bye, honeys. Love you. Love you, honeys. Did you hear the fucking oh, birds yeah. chirping? Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's really walking. He's having a grand old day. The fucking birds are chirping, dude. Just fucked his I best friend's ex. love how he just fucked his yeah, best best friend's ex. He is walking to the car, and he must have us on fucking speed dial. I got to call the viral pod. <laughs> Ladies, guess what? I, just, I fucking love that. In the most critical, crazy ass moments, people so are calling. Much. Um, should you feel bad? Well, yeah, if you have feelings for your best friend, if you like your relationship with your best friend. Man, hear me out. When he first said what he did and said, Should I feel bad? My thoughts were, Yeah, bro, you should feel bad. But then he said that his friend cheated on her, and then I'm like, but mm. but just because your friend got cheated on, well, yeah, you shouldn't fuck your best friend's ex in general. Oh wait, the girl cheated on him? no, his friend cheated on her, and then the, fucked the the guy, the girl he just fucked. You get it? No. Hey, could you wait, explain the guy this? Okay, fucked the girls. <laughs> His best friend's a girl's dad. Brett, let me dad. do this. Let me do this. What? Whoa. How'd Brett, you get dad in there? Lean that? back. Lean back. Touch, Touch the wall. Touch the wall, Brett. Okay. Okay. There's this guy. He's got a best friend named James. James's ex-girlfriend named Sydney is right here. James cheated on Sydney. They broke up. He... Goes and fuck Sydney. Sydney. He's walking to his car. Should he feel bad about it? <sighs> mm, I don't know. It's tough. He's in a pickle, dude. I think if you just did it the once, and you don't tell him, <laughs> and you go on about your life, I think it'll be fine. Oh no, it will always come out. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But he said it was some of the best sex he's ever had. Well, you know he's going back. Enjoy it, then move on. That's where, that's where you get. That's where, you, where it gets sticky. You keep going back for the pussy. Shit's gonna. Yeah. Is Shit. it worth your friendship? Is the pussy that good? Uh, yeah. Is it turtle snapping pussy? Turtle. <laughs> it's a turtle snapper. A slit. Is it a slit? Is it a tight slit? Tight wet slit. <laughs> oh. If it's a good slit and you really like her and that's how you feel and whatever, then gosh. Yeah, pussy always ruins friendships, too. Yeah. So. That's He's going to choose the pussy. Oh, God. Bro, I think you should just hit it. Hit it once like you did and then just don't go back. If you love your best friend. Let us know. Let us know. You know, pussy's everywhere. Oh, yeah. There's millions of them. Hop on Tinder. 
Go to the store. Hey, honey. We weren't ready yet, Brett. Sorry. Go to Kroger. Go to Applebee's. You know, there's going to be pussy at Applebee's. Trust me. Go to Denny's. They have the fucking biscuits and gravy. That's slapping lately. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. All right. Love you. Love you. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of 21 Savage, and it's been great because I use my Raycon wireless earbuds to do it. These everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable, and they will not budge. Trust me. Raycons offer three sound profiles to match what you are listening to. Plus, noise isolation and awareness mode. So you can choose to be immersed in sound or to be able to hear your surroundings when you need to. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, I like to put on the noise isolation and just go into my own little world and just zen out. Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. Then when you need to charge, it's super easy. You can even do it wirelessly. With Raycons, you get the same quality audio as the other brands, but half the price. Yes, really, but that doesn't mean they won't last. I've heard people talking about their Raycons falling from three stories, lost in the rain or snowstorms, and still working afterwards. It's no wonder Raycons earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. Check out Raycons wireless earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave them a five-star review too. Go to buyraycon.com slash viral today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash viral to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash viral. So I know you guys don't like long <coughs> calls, so I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Listening to video that just came out, don't want to say the number, doesn't really matter. A caller called in talking about how she has a great life, two kids, great kids, great husband, suffers with depression. I have been wondering what is wrong with me, myself, for a long time because I do have a good life. I have five amazing kids, and I think that I have the exact same problem And today that caller, and you guys shine a lot of light on me, and I really appreciate that caller and you guys because... I think that I am maybe depressed or I suffer with anxiety or something. Um, anyways, I really appreciate you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Fuck what everybody else thinks. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. honeys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, damn. Mm. Thank you for calling in. She almost made me fucking. Me too. Um, honeys. Thank you for listening to the pod. We're so happy that we played that call for you, that you were able to, you know, um, know that you're not alone, that we were able to, I don't know. I don't really don't know what to say. I just, you know, sometimes people with great lives and that have everything going for them, something's still off and mm -hmm. that's, and that's okay. Just get, you know, go, you know, get some help. There's nothing wrong in that. There's, some, yeah, there's sometimes not like, oh. Uh, valid feeling or valid anything for the way you feel right you can have everything and i get she said she had five kids mm -hmm. yeah i could get how kids too you're surrounded by them all day and mm -hmm. you would feel you could feel alone i feel like well and it's like people that have never i've never suffered from depression i just want to throw that out there i'm not i'm not pretending like I'm an expert or anything, but someone who has never maybe dealt with that and doesn't know what's going on, probably that probably would be confusing thinking, whoa, what's going on? Because when I was younger, a lot younger, mm -hmm. I thought depression was way different than, than what I realized it was. I thought depression is when like your life's horrible and it sucks and yeah. everything's going wrong and you fall into a depression. Uh -huh. No, you could have the best life with the surrounded by the best people and everything could be perfect and you could still not feel good. So I think sometimes that's confusing for people. Like she's probably confused. She's probably busy as hell with her family life and surrounded by people and has probably um, never really thought about that for herself before. So, um, 
depression, anxiety, honeys. I, there's there's lots of you could talk to somebody, go see a doctor. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of that. Oh no! If yeah. you need help to make yeah. you feel better, exactly. <laughs> do it, and then do it. Or even if you don't want to go that route, like try to diagnose yourself and yeah. figure out what makes you happy, what brings you down, even. And yep. Talk, even talking about it, and mm-hmm. yeah. Reaching thank out, thank yeah. you for calling in. We love you. Thank you for the support, and I hope the days get easier for you. Yes, we love you so much. Hey, honeys, would you rather orgasm every time you had sex? Or would you rather never pay to go out to eat again? Mm. Love you, honeys. Bye. Ooh. Ooh. Would I rather mm-hmm. orgasm every time I had sex or never pay every time I ate out? I think I'm choosing the orgasm. Yeah, the orgasm. But you almost nut every time you have sex. Yeah, but won't that be taken away? No, I don't think so. (coughs) No, let's just say no, hypothetically. So you's eating for free, bitch. All right, cool. Maggie, what would you pick? I would pick the orgasms. Yeah. I'll pay for food, but, you know. (laughs) You got to get that nut. Sometimes it's, yeah, it's too hard to be getting. Let's say I didn't have an orgasm. I'd just get the orgasm. Yeah. Yeah, have some blue balls. What's a what a great question? Because I'm prepared yeah. for the pan. Yeah, not everyone can get that nut. Yeah, I liked that question. I would definitely choose to to nut every time I had sex. Good question. Thanks for calling in, honeys. Oh, this is the uh, last call. <gasps> yeah. Are All right, down. here we go. Hey, honeys, I got two things here. First thing is, uh, I think I can speak for everybody and say, you know, we just love you. You know. Uh, you know, we all got things going on in our lives and, you know, got struggles and whatnot. But, uh, you know, you guys are just, I feel like, you know, you guys are family, like one of us, you know. And, uh, like, I was in the store and seeing you guys in an aisle over, Justin's Beaver was standing there. I wouldn't even think twice about going to see him. I'm coming to see y'all, you know. Like, we all got uh, stuff going on. I feel like we could, like, you know, conquer the world with you guys. And, uh, yeah, so I thought you guys should hear that. Second thing is I'm uh, watching the newest episode, episode 35, talking about Brett's cum rag. I think a great merch idea would uh, be to sell some uh, some cum rags, you know, nice. maybe with uh, with Brett's face on it or it uh, says rock fuckers or maybe a little, we'll say a Brett's mustache. But, uh, yeah, just a thought. And, uh, yeah, love you, honeys. Oh, yeah. Love you. I love how he said Justin's beaver. I know. Like I say. Uh huh. Justin's beaver could be on the next aisle. Oh, honey's your family to us too. Thank you for for the kind words and for calling in and for just listening to the pod. I still can't believe people listen to it. Me either. <laughs> and dude, I'm gonna tell you, they make me feel mm-hmm. not alone myself. Mm-hmm. Like I fuck. They are my, I love the rock fuckers. I told y'all this. I was at a uh, restaurant the other day and I, I had this older guy come up to me and goes, love the pod, never miss an episode. I was yeah. like, thank you. Yeah. Oh Very nice. The love, the story yeah. shares, the yeah. everything. It's awesome. Running the Facebook pages that they do, the mm-hmm. Instagrams. It's awesome. We love you guys. For real. And maybe one day we'll go on a little little podcast tour, do some live podcasts for you. Would you come? Oh, my. Let us know if you'd show up. Could you imagine? It'd be fun. The rock fuckers in a crowd all together? Oh, God. Shit would be wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If all the rock fuckers were out in the audience, we'd be stoned. So- in a good way. You know what I mean? Yeah. All so, the rock fuckers. Yeah. Dude. Yep. There would be some chaos for sure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good times. Yeah, let us know if you ever want to see us eventually one day go on a little tour. We'll twerk and stuff uh-huh. and up on stage and mm-hmm. we'll let you smell our belly buttons. Yeah. How do I clean the inside of my belly button? It stinks. Vaseline. Yeah. Just what? put it in the... Um, Vaseline in your belly button, and you take a shower, and it just comes out. I never heard that. Yeah. I just take 
some soap and just kind of finger it. Get a Q-tip and roll it in the cracks and see what the fuck comes out. Oh, I'm going to do that one. Do it. Do you put a solution in, though? No, I just, like, get it wet and then roll it. Ooh. You got to clean it, though. Yeah, I'm, oh, I clean my belly button almost every time I shower. I yeah. clean it, and I do the Q-tip method, but it, it needs a solution. How do we get on this subject? Oh, um, <laughs> we were talking about it all just the time. Just use your belly buttons. All right. Oh, yeah. Got to go clean my belly button now. All right, all honeys. Right. Well, we call the you. podcast, and we love you all. And Let us know if you have any crazy stories that have happened to you, any... You can you can say anything. Just call and say anything. All Just right. Say whatever. Right. But make, make it crazy. Yeah. Make it crazy. All right. And call us at four four two seven 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 three 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 one. And always remember, you're doing great. You're looking good. And, and fuck, fuck what, what everybody, everybody else thinks. Get ready. We're going viral. Get ready. We're going viral. Dude, it's freezing in here. My toes almost fell off.